about you Your fortune is good and you're happy too Don't look so sad when I put shit for you Happy good fortune, so funny, ha ha Sit down, relax and have a fucking soda or something Don't worry about anything ever again He checked heroin directly into your brain It's the happy good fortune Internet radio show Happy good fortune, everybody can inject heroin directly into your brain It's the happy good fortune Internet radio show All right Welcome to Happy Good Fortune 2.0 um, I am your host Ian Decker, and today I am joined by the Jaybird himself, John. John, welcome. Hi, uh, yeah, hello. Um, Thanks for having me. Yes, absolutely. So we got a new intro, we got new background, we got a new visual setup. Everything just looks great, and uh, John, you can't see any of it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I believe. Trust and believe. Um, yeah, no, I spent a good amount of time working on this, getting everything set up. I've been wanting to do this show again for a while. Me and John, you recorded, um, we recorded an episode several months ago and then we fucked up. The, I fucked up the audio completely. Everything was going through the webcam and, uh, nothing was going yeah, it, it, our mic. We were holding microphones like assholes, and, and nothing was being re recorded. So this is uh, effectively kind of take two, I guess. But uh, this setup is so much better. It works better. Less coordination necessary. It's just a fucking Discord call. I've got the wizard pondering John in the orb. I uh, thought I thought the Discord video capture would work with like a l the little green ring. Whatever. Anyway. Um, for a little context, um, why the show has been gone so long <laughs> and, uh, also context for why me and John know each other. Um, we met over a year ago now, both you and I have been sober for, uh, over, over a year now. Um, we went to, we were in rehab together. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. We well, we met mid August of last year. So yeah, over a year ago. Fucking crazy. Time flies. Um, John is one of my bestest buddies. One of the smartest guys I know. One of the funniest little guys I know. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's. But it's just uh, so I uh, <laughs> I haven't really. I wasn't really uh, capable of of running my life, let alone um, recording a shitty podcast or doing anything else. Uh, for a while until I had, uh, I, I got everything together. I've been doing pretty good. Uh, you've been doing pretty good. And, uh, you know, recently I had the itch to get this, uh, garbage rolling again. So, uh, we're, we're here to do exactly that. Um, I want to roll this off. I wanted to ask you a question, John, um, cause you, you suffer from the same kind of mental retardation that I do. Uh, John, have you been have you been gaming? Have you been playing video games? Um, you know, not not like as autistically focused as I had in the past, but definitely still will get you know the itch and and I'll I'll play like this or that or the other for like a week straight, and then I'll get bored of it. But yeah, I have been gaming for sure. Um, what was what did it look like? You've described just I know I've in, in the past I've described to you what gaming looked like for me uh years and years ago what what did that autistic obsession look like like how how frequently like how much time were you sinking man uh, i mean at, at my worst it was it was like sleeping for six hours and then being in neat so i'd wake up get on team speak and play until i like went to bed when everybody else was offline and so it was like like all day yeah. for a couple of years i'm trying to i'm trying to remember like my peak gaming years that's probably when i was um when i was a teenager um i remember and they were they were good times that's like that's the time in your life to 
to be fucking sinking your teeth into into fucking video games, I think. Um, Because there's not really much else you can do. Um, Like, I used to... um, I, I used to go on Team Fortress 2 and, and Skype with my friends um, pretty late into the evening. And um, especially in the summertime, like that was just that was those are some fond memories, like playing Minecraft or playing Team Fortress 2 or whatever uh, pretty late into the morning, the wee hours and, and, and stuff like that. But, yeah, I mean, when I started making music in like when I was like 15, 16, like it definitely slowed down a bit. And I think, um, yeah, since since adulthood, you know, there was always, like, this feeling. I'd play – it eventually morphed into, like, I'd play a video game for, like, 30 minutes every once in a while. And then I'd, I'd be going, like, what the fuck am I doing with, with like, any of this, like, my entire life? <laughs> and, and, you know, in, in sobriety, I, I will say in the, in the last year, it has been a lot easier to um, – definitely just kind of sit down and just play some games which i don't know if that's necessarily a good thing or a bad thing i mean video games are inherently a waste of time it's not something that you're you're gonna get much value out of other than like that was a cool experience and like depends on really what you're playing too i'm not gonna ever argue that video games are art i think that's a that's just not even a conversation that needs to be had by anyone um but like I've been playing Earthbound again recently. I just recently beat Dark Souls 2. I, I, I avoided Dark Souls 2. I've played every other fucking game. Tons of it. Uh, I, I, and I play Dark Souls 2 all the way through. I'm actually working on the DLC right now, so I guess I'm not done. But, like, that was, that was fun. That was a fruitful experience, I guess. But, like, what lasting... What, what is that doing for me, really? <laughs> you know? I guess I get I get that. I think I look back at like some of the times when I was like obsessively into it, and it was a lot of like before I ever became a substance abuser. Mm-hmm. Um, like video games were my substance. Sure. Like, you know, childhood trauma and um, a lot of time alone, where all I had to do was play video games, and then. I think, you know, I, it's not like I didn't have friends. I had a lot of friends at school, but it was nobody that I would want to, like, spend a lot of time with outside of, like, sitting and talking next to them in class. And then when I would go home, it was like, okay, all the people I played video games with, like, none of them but one of them went to school with me. So Right. Well, I, I get I think that. that I, and But that was where I got most of my socializing done was, like, playing games online or, um, you know, or even like if, if a, a, I remember being, I was in, I was a ju- junior in high school when Skyrim came out mm-hmm. and we would all sit in team speak together, um, and be like talking about like what's going on in our Skyrim game. And like, so while it was a single player game and it was right. kind of a waste of time, I think that, <laughs> I feel like the argument that that you're that you could make about like video games being an inherent waste of time. It's like, well, if we were all sitting around on the couch watching a TV show, isn't that like arguably the same? Well, sure. Thing? And like, honestly, you know? w- sitting on a t- on a couch watching a television show, there's not very there's not really much social interaction happening. There's not really any conversations or like good times. It's mostly like you're just absorbing things like a sponge. So like. Yeah, no, I mean, and it's interesting, too, that you, you kind of brought up the um, the social angle of it because I've been, I, I've been extremely online uh, most of my life. And, um, yeah, like, since I was a little kid. But, like, specifically, I think in my, my teens, uh, like, early teens even, that's when I started being like, I could be friends with anyone in the world. And, like, there was, like, a very positive aspect to it for a long time. Um, Or, I mean, maybe not a long time. When you're that that young, everything feels like a long time. So you know what I mean. But, like, a few years where it's just, like, cool. I know this guy and this guy from Australia. And I have this friend from fucking Bosnia or whatever. And we play fucking – we play video games and we talk and we shoot the shit. And, you know, that was always, I think, kind of my favorite thing 
about the Skype experience. I, w- I never was on TeamSpeak. I was always on, we always use Skype. We just always was, like abused the shit out of what, what Skype had to offer and found ways around. I remember watching um, every episode of the Dilbert cartoon with my good friend. I don't know if he wants his name on this podcast, but my good, my good friend, um, we, we would like play Team Fortress 2 and then like in the wee hours of the morning, like we would um, be both separately on YouTube on our respective PCs and like we would count down like five, four, three, two, one to to sync up like when we would press play on our our, our respective um you uh, you know computers and and watch like the show together. But like yeah, like me, I told you about I showed you Dank Pong, which is that book that me and him wrote, um or didn't ever finish, but like that like stupid comedy book where we each took a turn writing a sentence and yeah we would just we would do that but like i think that's a, what i'm getting at is just like the video games were like never the centerpiece maybe they were but like everything that happened around the gaming sesh that's what i like remember fondly like i i can't tell you about like a good time that like my friend was a pocket medic and i was playing soldier and i did a sweet rocket jump and market gardener kill like no i can tell you about like funny conversations that i had with my friends um in in, like in the summer when i was like in eighth grade you know what i mean um so it's like yeah 100 percent. that see like now as a 30 year old and i like look back at a lot of the like really heavy gaming years of my life yeah a lot of the memories i have are of of like something happened in a game where we would just end up like crying laughing or like i still i still have a very vivid memory of the first time me and like a full group of four guys um like beat left for dead 2 on the hardest difficulty oh, nice. yeah, like i still yeah. remember how we felt you know what i mean but like i couldn't i i now and i i think back then i used to think like oh man like and there are still some games i think that like i could jump into and like remember like some people on i see on instagram or um reddit or something where they're like talking about how they they know their way around like san andreas and grand theft auto better than do their own town right and i i kind of would laugh at that and be like oh that's ridiculous and then (laughs) uh the other day um i was like i got paid i was bored as shit um i had a cold i didn't want to do anything and i saw that the old like playstation xbox original playstation 2 like star wars battlefront like the the good ones from forever ago were like yeah they got released as like a you know like a classic dual pack thing on the switch and it was on sale for like five dollars i was like well fuck it i'm gonna do it and i remembered everything about that game as soon as i like clicked it and i like went into it i was i remembered where everything was i you know it it was almost like i had this feeling even though i hadn't played it in like 10 years at least if not more Mm -hmm. i had this feeling where i'm like oh my god like this is I didn't get that new shiny game feeling. I immediately was just like, oh yeah, and I didn't even play it for that long because I was like, oh yeah, I remember this. I did all this yeah. already. Yeah, that's a but, that's a funny thing too is the the nostalgia factor. I I think we talked about this months ago, um, because I had that Ann Burnick handheld, you know, emulation station with yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was we were saying together and um. But, like, it is very funny, you know, I do kind of hit a point, I've hit a point in my life where it's not that I don't play new games, but I'm much more likely to play ones, like, it's, I'm much more likely to grab, like I said, Earthbound, which I've played a fucking billion times, I'm much more likely to play Dark Souls 1, um, I'm much more likely to play old Super Nintendo games or, like, old PC games, and, like, if it's a new game, like, you know me, you know my, you know my taste, in um whether it's first person shooters like it's all i play just fucking quake clones and shit um but yeah like it is it is weird because like the example i use is my dad who um uh started restoring arcade cabinets for fun about seven years ago and uh he's done a really good job like he takes these arcade cabinets that are in rough shape and basically makes them look like factory showroom new from like the 1980s or 70s 
And um, it is funny because it's like I remember one point he got a Neo Geo, and which is a little after his time. Not that my dad's super old, but like you know he didn't he wasn't necessarily going to arcades in the 1990s, and um, he had a Neo Geo with Metal Slug and uh, Bust a Move and all this crap, all this good stuff on it. And uh, he got rid of it. And I was like, why'd you get rid of the Neo Geo? He's like, I don't play these games, dude. I don't have any emotions for these games. And it's like, yeah, you know, and it, I feel the same way. You know, you saw me. I um, I backlit my my Game Boy DMG. I backlit my Game Boy Color. I have the Game Boy Advance Micro, which was something I wanted back in like 2005 and uh, and didn't get because I, got, I just got a DS instead. But, you know, it is just very funny, like. What are the what am I doing lately? Oh, I'm playing through Metroid Fusion. I'm I'm beating Pokemon Gold. Uh, I edited the save so that I started the game with a Smeargle, and that's been really fun. But like, you know, I I definitely like see what see it for what it is. I'm not kidding myself. I I know that I you know it, it, I don't want to be I don't want to be infantilizing myself or or you know have, have develop some weird Peter Pan syndrome. But like, you know, I also don't take video games that seriously. So it's just like, you know, it's just like something I do for, you know, it is a comforting thing for sure. And it's just like, yeah, this is familiar. Like you play, you play, you were playing a bunch of uh, Advanced Wars last year. And that I, I have both those games, uh, one and two on the Game Boy Advance. I have the cartridges, uh, same thing. And, you know, it's just kind of like, yep, yeah, you know, I, I know this. This is comfortable. This is nice. Uh, it's familiar. And, uh, you know, I guess I guess that's like what all this fucking nostalgia thing is, you know, like, I mean, and, and I have to be wary of that because I criticize the shit out of um, aging millennials who are like, oh, fucking Star Wars, oh, Ghostbusters uh, the, the. and Gen Xers. They, it's the same, you know, same thing. But like, you know, um, I guess the difference between me and them is that, like, I'm not uh, no one's selling me. No one's trying to fucking sell me uh, the shit that I like, at the very least. And if they did, I'd I'd call I'd call them out for their bullshit. And I wouldn't be buying it, you know. Like, how how many times, you know, any of the the movie remakes or anything, you know, like Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice came out recently, and that just looks like a fucking pile of dog shit. And uh, you know, it's it's just uh, it's just people selling selling grown adults the the toys they had when they were children. You know, you see that everywhere. But um. Yeah, I mean, you definitely can't escape nostalgia, I guess, is what I'm saying. Like, not entirely. Um, part of the reason I enjoyed, enjoyed Dark Souls 2 so much is, is one, because I, I went into it with a guide on, like, how to, like, not fucking be miserable. And um, and beyond that, it was, like, I enjoyed it because, like, it was like, oh, this is familiar. This is the weirdest game in the series, but it's still very familiar, you know. Um, so, I don't know. It, it, is a, it is a comfort thing. Um. One one thing I did want to say, uh, you mentioned the social aspect. It it's uh, with uh, in regards to like my friends, like my my best friends were online. You know, I had like you had acquaintances or cronies or whatever. And I think like, you know, uh, people people have especially older older people have complained about this like my entire life. It's just like, oh, all your friends are on the internet, Ugh. and it's like, well. I don't know if it's a if it's healthy or not, but like the point is, is and I'm sure you probably felt the same way, John. It's like uh, all your it's it, it it's it can be very hard for some of us to um, find things in common with people, and I think I think for us too, especially like you know you're 30, I'm 27. Like in our age group, um, all of this stuff. All of social media and Discord and like game servers and Steam and all this shit like that. It's it was all it's all pretty novel when it came out to us, and I think it to us it's still kind of novel. But um, I think it was just very much like wow, an opportunity to find people that are just like me or pretty damn close. Do you, would you agree with that sentiment in regards to like you know online gaming and the kind of stuff we're talking about? Because like I've been thinking about this. Yeah, actually, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Um, I had a point to make about that too. When you, uh, I think one thing is like I was kind of a contrarian, and I remember when like Xbox 360 and like PlayStation 3 were starting to come out, and like, um, I'm, I'm specifically thinking about 2009 when Modern Warfare 2 came out. Yeah, and I had forgotten my like my dad, um, and me weren't like very well off and um so i had to choose between like 
do I want a gaming like a gaming computer, which I had grown up playing PC games right. like Same. Command and Conquer, Red Alert, and stuff like on an older computer that my uh, my neighbor, who was my babysitter, got a new one and he gave it to me, his older one. So I grew up playing like PC games, but I didn't have internet. So it was like Command and Conquer and like, and then my mom and dad got me a PlayStation 2 and I played like Budokai and like Star Wars Battlefront and like Madden. But oh, I didn't really, I wasn't like a huge gamer when I was that young. Yeah. And then in 2007, when uh, Call of Duty 4 came out, mm -hmm. I needed to play that game. Like I remember. I remember going to Best Buy with my dad and buying a pre-built that could handle that game specifically. Sure. And um, that same year, we got good internet at the house. And so I played, and that was back when it was dedicated servers. And I remember finding a server. I was young. I wasn't good at it. Right. So I went to a server that had like new player friendly, like written right in the title of the yep, thing. Yep. And it was never, and it was, and it was never a full server. And it was, I remember it was called AWP. And it was like, there were like four dudes in there that had the clan tags on. Mm -hmm. And then it was always like, you know, it was never even a full match by console standards. Yeah. Right. And everybody was just sitting in, vo in voice chat, bullshitting and like talking about their day at work. Yep. yep. And they were just friends. And I started hanging out with them in their team speak. And then I remember, so like for me, it's dedicated servers were a huge deal. That was like in bad company to um, battlefield to, and like when 2009 came call of duty, modern warfare two came out, they, t they took away dedicated servers and moved it over to steam matchmaking. Yeah. Which sucks. And I, I hated it. Yeah. I've never I been a fan. I, I will always because be. Because matchmaking was the whole reason I didn't go to an Xbox. Right. You're right. You know? Yeah. Well, it's just, yeah, I, there's nothing better than, like, for me, um, jumping on Team Fortress 2 or Counter-Strike or, or some source game and then going through the list of dedicated servers, Harvest 24-7, um, Orange 24-7, you know, whatever, and then just like, okay, I know who's going to be here. And I know what I'm in for. Let's let's check this out. Like, I don't know. That's, yeah, that's, it's the same thing, too, because it's like the first-person shooter games that I play is like Quake Live, TF2, you know, Counter-Strike, you know, and then like um, fucking Warhawk. Warhawk on PS3 was like my first real, like, because I, I didn't have Xbox. I wasn't a Halo kid or anything. So, like, Warhawk was my shit on PS3. And um, same thing, you know, you, I mean, there's, not really as much voice chat or anything like that, but like it was same same thing. It wasn't really joining random matches for the most part. I you I do distinctly remember having like dedicated servers that you could pick. Yeah, I don't know that that that's kind of leads me into like the point. Uh, I guess also so, of like social interaction. Like um um I I don't like being old man. Like the internet used to be better. It's like no rage comics uh pre facebook internet like new grounds something awful like yeah it it wasn't it was freer there was a you know people use the term wild west internet or whatever that's definitely apt um but you know i don't i don't want to be that guy but it, there is something to be said things have ne uh, definitely gotten worse uh things have definitely gotten more insidious obviously like we know why social media exists we know uh, what it's for, what it des its design is. Um, it's incredibly insidious, and and uh, the, the the cynical nature of of like the internet has has never been more apparent. Um, and I don't know because I was talking about how like it was so cool for me and you to like be able to like make friends with whoever in the world, people that you know. It's way easier to find people who are like minded or whatever, right? But like. I have definitely disengaged in that regard in recent years. Like I hardly use Instagram, meaning that I'm basically off social media. I had to I logged in to post the um the promo for the the show intro today, 
I logged in for my PC, and then to share it to my story, I had to use an Android emulator on my computer because I am not putting social media apps on my phone ever fucking again. I'm done with it. But, um, yeah, like, I don't know, in recent years, like, I've definitely slowed down with it. I, I have, like, less and less interest with, like, talking to most people, <laughs> let alone strangers on the internet. Um, and I might have gotten burnt out with the, the Zhang Yang thing, but I don't think that's just it. I, I, I think <clears throat> I think I've recognized, I'm writing a paper on this uh, slowly but surely, um, kind of about this. But uh, it's it's uh, Midwest. It's called Minnesota Nice, <clears throat> Minnesota Nice in the uh, in the American attitude, and uh, talking about like just people's behaviors, like the historical reasons for why Americans are the way that they are. Uh, but like a huge part of it is that like there's a section that I'm c- covering, which is basically going into like how um, Westerners and especially Americans might be like the loneliest people on the planet, um, like atomized. And it's it's ironic because and I and I know I'm segueing here, but that that was kind of the point. Um, it, it, I I've recognized that like the irony is that like we we're we're more interconnected than ever. Every single person, pretty much every person that you know, even fucking like a good amount of homeless people, have a little computer in their pocket with unlimited internet access. Uh, where you can talk to any person in the world, you can look up any piece of information. And I know this is like fucking wannabe big brain, like Joe Rogan type topic here, um, which I want to get into that later too. Fucking Joe Rogan. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's interesting because it's just like, I, I think I think people are incredibly lonely. I think it's like, I think it's the result of like an overload. Like, yes, I can technically talk to anybody in the world and I can see anything I want in the world. And it's like, because you have all of it, it's, there's, there's no yearning. There's no sense of want. There's no sense of discovery. There's no sense of like accomplishment when you actually like utilize fucking Google to look something up. So you choose to stay ignorant and you choose to um, not interact. You, cho- you choose to not utilize the internet in the way that I think it was originally meant to be used. Do, do you get what I mean? Yeah, I was actually w- earlier, like before you said we're the loneliest people in the world. Like I was just thinking about mentioning something similar to that, which yeah. I think that the it's I think part of it is a abundance of like like there's so much social interaction now going on all the time that you get sick and tired of it and that by proxy you're shutting off meaningful connection because sure. you're getting so much meaningless connection yeah no 100 100 and i think like it affects people's like personal social lives like deeply so like um in this paper so part of the research that i've done um i learned that the term nuclear family was coined in the 1920s it's it's that recent of a term and um, the reason why this is noteworthy is because um, families throughout most of human history and most cultures have been multi-generational. A household is usually like grandparents, parents, and then children, and sometimes their children, depending on the you know how many kids they have, the age group, blah, 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 blah. Um, that went away with the 20th century, or it diminished greatly. The only fucking people that had multi-generational households by like, uh, were like fucking, you know, were like, immigrants and minorities and like Italians <laughs> and even then like not really um but like yeah then th- that turned into the nuclear family which is like funny I think about my dad and like my mom and and their parents and everything and like how uh spread apart and atomized and how like little like little conversation and interaction actually happens between like anyone in the, that extended fa- my extended families And then I think about, like, my generation, like, you know, millennials and Zoomers and uh, and beyond. And, like, you grow up and then, like, the whole, like, nuclear family, like, hardly exists anymore. And I wonder if uh, that, like, something something having to do with social media, like, has something to do with that. You know what I mean? Um, It it probably does. Like, human beings are, like, incredibly susceptible to burnout. Um 
And like people will hold on to their jobs. Like job burnout is a real thing. Like people and people are definitely more resilient than I am. You know, I get I get fed up with jobs. Um, that happens to me. And like I, I I've in the past especially been like I'm fucking jumping ship, fuck this. But like people will put up with shit if it's like a necessity. Um, but like, yeah, the second that like uh, you can get off the hook. Like, if I don't have to, t- I don't have to talk to my mom, or I don't have to answer her call. You just ignore. Like, how many times have you igno- Like, I don't know about you, but like, I've done it, and I feel bad about it. But like, you know, how many times have I saw my dad is calling, and I'm just like, it's not that I'm busy. It's just like I'm not in the mood. You know, oh, I did that just today. Yeah, and it's just like, yeah. what? Like, if 30 years ago you didn't have call, or not? Maybe not 30. Goddamn, I forget what year it is. But, you know, like in the 80s and 90s, before you had caller ID, um, you pick up the fucking phone regardless. Someone's calling you. And it's like the fact that we ignore text messages and voicemails and missed calls, DMs, anything. Like, I think that's indicative of a greater like social problem. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think. And I want to go back to what you were talking about with the nuclear family. Um, Mm Yeah. Because yeah, I think that the, the a big part of that, and uh, going towards off of what you're saying about Americans specifically being some of the loneliest people, yeah, like a lot of that was like social programs and like the government encouraging people to, you know, like okay, well here's this land, go and develop this area, right? And it's yeah. a lot easier for people to do that when they don't have to drag twelve people with them, right? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And there, I know I was actually my mom right now lives down in Oklahoma and I, I'm like, why the fuck are you there? Like, the healthcare is dog shit. Oh, and, uh, Oklahoma where the fucking air smells like manure, yeah. Oklahoma. And, uh, I was watching a God. I don't even remember what it was. Some, some true crime thing while I was like painting. And, uh, it was like this, it just started going off and I really love it when like documentaries or true crime, you know, like a murder mystery or anything like that. And then they start going off talking about like the history of the like area that this took place in and how this thing that happened like 80 years ago mm-hmm. is relevant. You know, like I, cause the, like they, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of how to word it, but they started talking about like the Sooners mm-hmm. in Oklahoma and like, People from you know were encouraged to just like, dude, just like get your ass out there, stick a flag with your name on it down, yep. and the government will literally give you land. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean that goes way and, back uh, into like frontierism, though, and that's funny that you mentioned. No, that I know. Because... I'm just saying that that's. I I agree. I'm saying like, I yeah. think that a lot of our culture is still like idolizing and almost like set up for this like, hey. You know, you got to pick yourself up with your bootstraps, go out there and or even like, you know, the the San Francisco football team is named the 49ers after something that happened like 150 years ago. Right. Well, during the gold rush. And And it's like, yeah, that's not possible anymore. And you've still got people with this mentality that like, I'm going to grind, I'm going to bust my ass, you know, and then I'm going to make I'm going to make I'm going to make something for myself. I'm going to, I'm going to carve something out for myself in the world. Yeah. Yes. And I think that it's an admirable thing to want to do if you can be realistic about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think like personally, I think my version of that would be like when I was, when I was 15 years old, my version of that would, would have is, is, I don't even, I can't even think of what I know it was lofty and ridiculous, you know. Sure, sure. Which I think at fifteen, mine was being homeless. You know, yeah. and now, I think, like my carving my way into the world would be like I would like it if someday I could own like a house, maybe like three acres, and open up like an animal rehabilitation center. Yeah, no, one hundred percent, and like that's and like not that's like something that is relatively well- attainable. Yes, and but. it doesn't mean I'm rich. I don't care about money. It's not about like getting a fucking reality TV show where they come out there and talk about how I'm this like quirky <laughs> weird guy who's taking care. You know what I mean? Like, no, it's John, that's what you like, need. More attention. That's what you need in no, your life. Yeah, is you exactly. need more and more attention, and everyone needs to have their eyes on you. And you need a big follower count, don't you know? 
Don't you know how the world works, John? That's what I'm saying. It, 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 it seems like that's what everybody equates now to yeah. success. And Everybody wants to be a um, fucking celebrity. And I think that like the, the American dream and the American mentality is an honorable thing, it, but it hasn't changed with the times. Right. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, I mean, you, the, here, here's, you know, I, here's the thing. And cause I talk about this in my paper and, um, my, uh, my Buddhist teacher, my, the monk I see, uh, at the temple, he, he was the one that made me privy to this, but like, uh, yeah, like frontierism in America and it, it even goes before that. I mean, the fucking American Revolution. But like, if you want to talk about like cultural echoes and like why we are the why this culture is the way that it is. Um, but like frontierism through any semblance of collectivism out the window. Um, you you have the American identity is is this, and it is a neurotic. Uh, it's a neurotic, like psychotic fucking person who thinks that everyone and everything is out to get him. Um, you, you, not that you should trust the government, obviously. It's extremely corrupt. But I'm just saying, like, every force, every power is, is corrupt. Society is corrupt. It's me against the fucking world. And I've got to make it on my own. And um, it's, it, and it, it's coupled with, like, this, like, Protestant like identity that I, that I, that is very, very much like uh, a part of American culture. Like whether or not you're a, a Protestant, like you deal with like the ethics of like a, like a, a hell fearing Protestant. And like, so your, your morality is very black and white. Um, everything is out to get you. Um, it's, it's all, it's all about, you know, uh, self-sufficiency, me making mine, you know what I mean? And like, there are, there are aspects, um, of the of, of of all of this that are like beneficial but like it's not sustainable and uh it's not sustainable for a society for for every fucking person to be acting this way um you know people people talk about how in third world countries you know like the, there's very very little like cases of depression uh and it, it's be it's not just because like oh people always say like oh it's because they don't have fucking time to be depressed it's like yeah that's true but like it's also because of the fact that like there is a strong sense of collectivity there's a there there you have like a safety network like built into your your town or your tribe or your family like these are not things that we have in America we are thrown to the fucking wolves um i can't tell you how many how i can't tell you how many times i've heard the story from a friend or from someone online where it's like yeah i'm in debt I, I, I got like into a fucked up like accident or something like my, my situation's fucked up and my family refuses to help me. Um, like that happens all the time. And, uh, or like, like I need an expensive procedure done and I don't know what to do. And I have like nothing like the, yes, the government won't help me, but also like, I don't have like family or friends. And it's like, did you, are your parents dead? It's like, no. Are you guys on bad terms? No, not necessarily. Like, there's just nothing. There's, there's, there's no. It, you, you'll, you'll talk to a baby boomer about needing like, uh, needing a fucking money, and they, they will ride your ass about it if they'll even give you any money. And not, and I'm not saying that like you should be a fucking beggar, but like, communities are supposed to come together. Like throughout human history, the communities come together and try to fucking help each other out. You know what I mean? This is uniquely uh, antisocial and like fragmented and i keep using the word atomized but it's true like um like culture that we have and it's it's so fucking self-destructive and, and sad um but yeah i mean it really does go like back to like the inception of what the 13 colonies are what frontierism is um all of these attitudes are just are, are fucking leftovers and they need to go i mean there's a huge reason there's many reasons why i uh, made a quote unquote formal conversion to Buddhism, Theravada specifically, I guess Theravada specifically, but, um, like a, a huge part of it was like, I needed a community. I needed like to be involved. Like I'm learning Burmese, <laughs> which is like an extremely small, obscure language in, in the grand scheme of things, uh, because of the fact that like, I also need I need the Sangha. I need the monks. I need the other lay people. I, I need uh, the, the, my white Dhamma friends. 
um, that I that I know from the temple. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think that's also yeah, like no. there's a huge we push about right now. Like, even. well, like with baby or not baby boomers with uh, Zoomers, like there's this huge like all these kids are like I'm becoming a Catholic or I'm you know converting to Orthodox or I'm Christian or I'm Muslim or whatever. There's like a religious push happening with young people or at least at the very least like a genuine spiritual. Uh, move not like their predecessors who are a bunch of fucking you know new age hippies who just want to sell you fucking snake oil um like there's a genuine like concerted effort to like find um some sort of structure and community and like religious unity happening right now in culture and um you know it's very funny too the, the attitudes that will like older millennials like um reddit like 40 year olds you know uh, people who are 40 now who are like, well, what is up with these kids LARPing and pretending to be Catholic? It's like, they're not pretending you're the asshole who, who's, you know, your dad, your dad took you to church once and you had a negative experience. And now you think uh, being an atheist is still cool. Like, like that's your, that's your personality. But like, yeah, no, there, I think, I think zoomers have not only just seen like the failings of their predecessors and like the spiritual destitution of their predecessors, uh, and realized it's no good. But beyond that, I think like a large part of it really does come from like, I have no, I am a man without a country. I'm a man without a home. I'm a man without a community. And I need these things. I need these things in my life. I'm a human being. I'm not a fucking, you know, I, no man is an island, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think like, I remember being in like high school. So this is like 2010 ish. Yeah. And I had like my nose up at religion and religious people. And I was like, well, I'm a fucking atheist. And like, sure. you know, and I hated religion. And I thought that it was like, well, you come to kind of realize like it's the people who are running and organizing these religions that are causing people to want to leave it. Oh, sure. But then they end up, it's like you're, what's, what's the, you're spiting your face or cutting your nose off in spite of your face or whatever it right, is. Right, right the phrase like you know it's like well okay so then i wrote off like the entire anything good that i could have gotten out of like a, a oh, sure. spiritual community and there's i'm not saying there's not corruption i mean i mean there's a, a lot no, of no, people no, a lot saying, of people I'm, I'm become the way they that, are because of religious um, trauma yeah and i never had with my parents weren't for my mom i think my mom's always believed and my dad never really talked about it yeah and when i was I a kid they, like, they would bring me to church and then they but my mom and dad were always very like open talk to me like an adult which i think was good and bad i think yeah. there's like merits to to that yeah but they asked me sword. like do you if i still wanted to go to church and i was like fuck no like why would i want to go to right. church when i'm yeah, like eight years old it's fucking boring it's uh um, yeah exactly i was you, like this is people stupid people telling I don't you you're going shit. to hell you know um it's weird but then like i think now with what you're like with this like newer like people turning to religion Mm -hmm. again um i hear some people saying like well they think it's like it's a right-wing resurgence amongst right. the youth and i'm like no it's like people who want to like get what in my opinion you know historically oh yeah like way back historically like yeah sure church is about god and all and of course that's what's going to get written down when the main people who are in charge of literature for hundreds of thousands of years right Hundreds, well, two thousands of years is, is right, right. monks in churches. You know what I mean? So it's like, of course, that like a lot of the writings that are going to come out of the Middle Ages are about how about like coming from the church because that's who kept records. Well, right? yeah. Well, and like, but, I, th I think but, but to, church to... as a whole is about it's like, OK, every Sunday, everybody in the town gets to come to this one place and talk and make food and bullshit with each other. Right. It's it's a gathering of the community around something wholesome. That's really. And I mean, I think ultimately that's what that's the purpose that it's served. If that wasn't, you know, it's officially named purpose. That's exactly that's definitely what it was doing for right. a very well, long time. It, 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 it certainly think, is. That is the function. And like stepping back for a minute, I mean, there definitely is like a like anything uh, there in you know, especially the you know the way the political climate is now. I mean, there definitely there definitely is like political motives. I think a lot of the time, um, whether it's to distance yourself from politics or to embroil yourself into it further, I think that's the difference. I will say for someone like myself, um, 
becoming inherently less concerned about the fucking bread and circus and like politics in general definitely led me back to uh, Eastern philosophy and uh, Buddhism as a religion specifically. But like, you know, there's plenty of people also who like part of the conservatism and traditionalism, a part of that is also like a return to like uh, traditional values in terms of like spiritual and religious, you know, aspects, um, which is fine. Like that's also fine too. Um, the the interesting thing I think it's worth noting is that like you know, uh, Zoomers tend to go uh, a little bit harder in terms of like the uh, right wing or left wing politics, and um, I, it's very funny. And I I do agree, uh, but like. Uh, there's a reason why a lot of these young cats are going Orthodox or Catholic and not like fucking Presbyterian or Methodist or, or some sort of like Protestant faith. You know what I mean? They're like, fuck, fuck those assholes. No, I'm going, I'm going to the, I'm going to get Jesus from the horse's mouth or, you know, and there's a reason why I know, I know like Zoomers who have converted to Islam. Um, it's, it, it, there is like, and I, I don't, I get it. Um, I, I walk the path that I walk because of the fact, just because of the simple fact that it's yielded me the most, um, results and like answers. Um, but I, I totally get why people do it, but like, it definitely is like, we got to, I got like swinging the pendulum the other way, so to speak. Um, it's like, you know, the circus that we live in is so extreme and ridiculous that it's like, I need to fucking, Yes, there's, I am, I, I am a, <laughs> I'm a fun, I'm a hardcore Catholic and I'm studying to become a theologian and my, my hero is Ted Kaczynski and I'm going to live in the woods. You know what I mean? Like, there's a reason why this, this, this like kind of subculture exists. And to, to say that I don't sympathize and like also completely understand it would be like a, a complete, that would be a lie, <laughs> you know? Um, I, I, I'm personally just trying to live like live with what I what I have and not be constantly like engaged in escapism and fantasy because that's not healthy um, I should be able to be at peace with with the world on fire um, otherwise how am I going to be at peace when everything's fine if, it, if if it's ever fine you know what I mean um, speaking of nightmare clown world uh, man we're moving right along on this episode um, I know it's kind of passe and uh, well-tread territory especially at this point but uh, have you seen? <laughs> I, I have bigger points to make with this. But have you seen the Minecraft movie trailer? I honestly, this is how un, like, unplugged from. I I was seeing things called the Minecraft movie, and I <laughs> was thinking it was a joke. <laughs> I didn't even actually think that it was like a real thing. I got bad news for you. Oh, oh God! Yeah, I'm looking. <laughs> you, 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 is my that, screen share is still that working. Jason Momoa. Oh, it gets worse. It gets worse, and this is this is great. This is fucking great because I have a whole point to make about it, and you don't know. This is awesome. Uh, you can see you can see my screen. It's just a green square. Okay. Yep. All right. Here we go, and right. hopefully you'll be able to hear it too. But let's uh, let's watch. <laughs> Oh God! Beatles, dude. Look at this diverse cast. Look at fat, bitchy black lady Jason Momoa. What the hell? No. Oh, just wait. Just wait. Anything you can dream about here, you can make. Who are you? I am Steve. No. <laughs> okay. Oh, this guy is such a tool bag. Yep, I agree, lady. All right, that's enough. That's all we need to see. Um, I. Just off of that, I have I have some things I'd like to. Before, I'm gonna let you get to where you're at. I just want this is my immediate reaction to seeing this. Um, 
<laughs> Sorry, I had to look at Jack Black there for a minute. Um, okay, <laughs> there we go. Skinny rehash Beatles. Yep. Please stop. Yep. Um, we've got to have Jason Momoa, the uh, trad wife, um, immaculate looking. No, he's got to look stupid. Uh-huh. Can't have good looking man be competent. No. Don't. That's not cool. Never. Um. Sassy that black really. Lady. That really gross like CGI that reminds me of um, that fucking, what movie is it? It's the one with the cow, chick, not Chicken Little. Anyway, the, yeah. that yeah, that that exactly that right there. <laughs> but it's still got to have that blocky pig. Like, I I hated everything about. That. <laughs> what do you mean, dude? It looks good. <laughs> um, I was. This is like. I don't remember. Uh, I guess I shouldn't say that because maybe maybe Pokemon was like that when we were kids. But I mean. It's like seeing like di- like foam diamond swords at five below or some shit. Oh yeah, and and like and like creeper like no, do kids? I right, I was there, dude. Okay, Notch yeah. is a is a war criminal as far as I'm concerned now. Yeah, um, no, totally. Fuck him. Because when Minecraft first came out, it was like, oh, cool, like yeah, the game looks like dude, the game looked like shit when it came out. Yep. The point was that you had like infinite, you could do whatever you wanted. And there was in, in an age when there was a limited memory for things like that. Yeah, it was a huge deal. And I played a shit ton of Minecraft. The more yeah, they added to too. Minecraft, the less I played until it got to a point where like anytime I pick up Minecraft these days, I literally like I boot up like a beta version of it. Like when I during like my peak of playing that fucking game, because it's just like. It's simple. It's straightforward. I don't need fucking 16 billion goddamn blocks. Like, Minecraft, like, and also just, like, from a cultural aspect, like, Minecraft is, like, bargain bin, like, it's it's somehow worse. When I see Minecraft branded things, it's, like, worse than seeing Fortnite. Because, like, Fortnite is very much, or, like, any of that kind of shit. But it's, like, that shit is, like, very flash in the pan. Um... Like, it, it's just, it's a game. It, it's a popular game. But, like, Minecraft has persisted to be this fucking thing, and it's just, like, yeah, it, it feels like, especially making a Minecraft movie now, I, I know I know there's, like, a trend of making video game movies uh, again recently, and uh, it's a terrible fucking idea. Um, speaking of terrible ideas... You didn't think Prince of Persia was good? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, dude, I love the Mario movie. I totally watched it. Yeah, man. Oh. The Sonic movie. So yeah, good. but like, but this, I mean, this makes the fucking, I mean, I'm not going to, I don't even want to get into um, that as much. What I, what I want to get into is this fat fucking retard that I've been looking at my entire life. Uh, this idiot, this blockhead, no pun intended, uh, that has persisted, <laughs> persisted in culture uh, what year did fucking uh, School of Rock come out? I was a kid, and I was I, I was a kid too. But oh, like, it was like late nineties, early two thousands. Fuck the, that movie. I mean, that movie is good, but like Jack Black has been playing that fucking character for like thirty fucking years now, and it's so funny. Before this trailer came out, a few weeks ago. I was in California and I was talking to my my brother and my mom and shit and I brought up we were talking I don't know how why but like Jack Black got brought up cuz he's in fucking everything these days it, even worse than it's ever been before um and I was talking about how like no fucking Jack Black sucks like he's super fucking annoying it's like this you know man child character or whatever he's been doing the same thing blah 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 and I said I said people are going to fucking eventually catch up with me and be totally sick of this fucking guy and there are articles now being published, especially after the Tenacious D blowout thing that happened or whatever, um, about people. People are and finally, because of this fucking trailer, people are finally fucking sick of Jack Black, and I was vindicated. Um, I hate, I hate this guy. I fucking hate this fucking guy. He is annoying. He's obnoxious. He, like, he is the emblem of, like, Gen X fucking, like, ugh. Like, 
Gen Xers that are just young enough to still be on fucking Reddit and like act like a millennial, which millennials, like older millennials, are fucking insufferable too. Bacon, bacon. Um, <laughs> Jack Jack Black is just like I I fuck I fucking hate him. I you know I was thinking about that uh, Kyle Gas you know tenacious D incident, and I I, I want to have a I want to have a Kyle Gas incident of my own on stage where um. They they bring out the birthday cake and they say, Ian, what what are, what are you gonna wish for? And I'm gonna I'm gonna say I wish that Jack Black gets fucking murdered on stage in front of millions of people while wearing a Bowser costume. That's that's gonna be my Kyle Gas moment moment. But um, unlike unlike that situation, it won't result in public backlash. Everyone will cheer and applaud for me, and they'll make me the fucking president. How about that? Because that's uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's how, no i just i fucking hate this guy man he's he's he just sucks and that's the other thing too like jack black has been in nothing but like garbage movies for the most part like fucking gear one um i guess nacho libre isn't a terrible movie but it's not like great it's it's like the sloppy seconds from the guys that made napoleon dynamite which is a good movie um but yeah like i don't know jack jack black just feels like uh just like a fucking jo- he's a fucking joke and i'm, I'm glad that like uh, this. Thank you. I also feel vindicated because I hate I've I've hated him, and I've noticed that the kind of people like Jack. This is the kind of I don't know if you've noticed this, but Jack, Jack Black is like okay. Either you don't hate the guy, but you ne- when somebody asks you like, oh, who's he? like, what are good comedy movies? Nobody ever brings up a Jack Black movie, but if somebody else brings it up. They're like, oh yeah, that movie was all right, right? Yeah. And then there's the people who are like who obsessed and like still talk about School of Rock, mm-hmm. and dress their like children up as like characters from this fucking movie so that they can be Jack Black for Halloween because it's about them. Right. Yeah. Again, more man child behavior. It's it's Halloween's not for my children. It's for me, a forty five year old fucking loser. <laughs> Look at this fucking asshole, this stupid face. What's Jablins, Jables? We're here, quarantining. Oh my god. I'm on his. Oh my channel. god. It's finally happening. Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm sorry, but. Subtitles. Anybody just... who's a celebrity to the point that, like, you're instantly recognizable whether you're in character or not. I don't want to hear your opinion about a fucking video game. I want to see, I want to I want to see what it looks like when Jack Black cries. I want to see what it looks like when like he's like he's been drinking too much and his family has to sit him down and like <laughs> and like he's like is he is he is he, is he like my like freaking bad dude? Is he doing that shit or is he like, you know, gen- genuinely hurt and penitent? I want to see I want to see Jack Black bleed. I want to see what his blood looks like to know he's fucking human. It's 2024 and people don't think my hard rock, soft rock songs about uh, Satan's cock are funny Shut up. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I never, I don't get it. What's Jablin's Jables? What Stop. is this? Alive. What is this, Stavros Halkius? Kill me. All it has to do oh, is is I'm sleeping. And- Hi guys, I'm too fat to live. Yeah, I I want to see like it just ah he he just he has the worst fucking vibes. Go, go back to that where you were is a thumbnail I was looking at. Which one? Kind of near where you were when you had the CPAP video up. Oh, okay. It, that one right there, the school of rap. That face he's making is oh, the same. Oh yeah, here, yeah. Let's it's go it's back. the uh, it's the Cookie ma- Monster snapback. <laughs> <wearing dude. laughs> oh, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah. No. It's it's millennials from the year like when they were teenagers in the 2000s. That's that's what this this is, and he's too old for it too. I'm pretty sure he's what in his 50s, 60s maybe. I mean, it's too much, and um, yeah, like this, this whole every face that this guy makes is like, oh, fifty-five. He's fifty-five years old, so my father is younger than Jack Black, and I mean, I don't know if my dad was 
making faces just in general i think i'd i think i'd have to fucking i'd i'd have to f- get into a physical altercation with my own father if he was pulling this kind of anything like this kind of shit famous or not i mean jesus christ yeah it's just it's it's so it's so bad i don't i don't un- and I, like i don't really want to talk about fucking this fat faggot anymore <laughs> um, but it just in like who 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 consumes jablinski games Probably no I didn't one. Even, now. I, I, he has five million subs, and I've never heard of him because nobody who's actually like in the community that these videos would be for want to, to hear his opinion. I feel yeah, like it's. I just like. I don't know. I, I also don't... it's called Jablinski Games, and I see one thumbnail with a game on it, and it's a music video. Oh Jesus! In? Yeah. All right. Ready. Uh, Oni, uh, uh, Chris O'Neill animated this, which is like get the bag, but Jesus Christ! No, yeah, get the bag. I'm fine with that. Well, after, I mean, I know also that fucking Chris or uh, Oni or whatever is a uh, is a you know big was a big fan of like Tenacious D, but like I think even he he said on like an episode of Sleepy Cabin from years ago, he's like, yeah, I've seen Tenacious D twice, and they're like, are you gonna see him again? He's like, no, that that would be too many times. And it's like I feel like even his fans can't like it's too much you can't it's too much of this shit yeah look at it <laughs> oh my god no dude <laughs> all right this is perfect this is this encapsulates every everything i hate about the uh the millennial cohort um yeah they have like they all have like facial expressions too that like really piss me off um here, like, um, furries, Dr. Steve Brule, uh, this, this girl, let me see. How come you want to be an animal? I personally wouldn't say it's so much as being an animal as it is getting to entertain people who like to see giant animals running around and shaking their hand, playing with them. How do you catch an animal? We don't actually catch the animals. Watch her face. We um, pay people to make the fursuits, or you can make them yourselves. How can we put a staple on your lip? It's piercing. Right here. Just... These, these awkward, like, facial movements? Yeah, like, yep, yep. You know, like, how, how many fucking, like, girls and, like, guys, like, people, like I said, people who are now in their late 30s, they all are like this. And they all, like, had Tumblr they... accounts where they made, like, bacon jokes. And like fucking like, like people that are like probably you no, know, they weren't even cool enough to watch Homestar Runner. Like that's how fucking lame these people these people are. Like I don't know yeah, what dude, it is, but like any like we've worked with um some honestly, <laughs> um not a, not even anyone we worked with together when we were working together was that bad. Like in that age demographic. Like, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, reblog. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's 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 um it's such a disgusting type of person and it immediately like makes my skin crawl. Like they still exist at like I guess like conventions is where you would you these people come out of the woodwork. I don't you know I don't really see them too often anymore and like I don't run into them in person uh living in the part of the world that I do, which is a fucking relief because uh I hate th- remembering or thinking about the fact that I share a planet with these th- those people um yeah every every generation really has uh its foibles but damn um I don't think I don't think anyone is quite as embarrassing as uh as millennials <clears throat> that's coming from um, uh, one thing I've, yeah. about like it's uh I think that if you're going to be a furry or something that is like generally not socially Accepted. Yeah. I shouldn't even say accepted, but like, okay, then like this person is clearly knowing that they're fucking weird, and I can't tell if they're being a could like if the reason they're doing it is to be contrarian. So they're showing this like Im- these like telltale physical signs of being embarrassed of themselves. Yeah. Like, yeah. They but they have to double down because now I'm on TV like defending my freedom. 
You know what I mean? Oh yeah. But well, like, well I'm on honestly, Steve. Rule. Like, just own it, dude. <laughs> like, if you would just come yeah. out there and own it, and be, and or even be, be honest. Be like, oh uh, yeah, I don't know. Me and some friends of mine are like, we're we're just like dress up like animals and like finger fuck each other because it's fun. I'd respect that. But it's... like coming out and being like, I just really like to embody the spirit spiritual whimsiness of a ferret or whatever the fuck. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well. Can we be? Can you just be honest? Like, can we see your Discord, and and then we can really see what the fuck this is about? Yeah, be. We want you to be honest with us. No one's no, no one's gonna make fun of you. We promise. <laughs> no one's gonna laugh at you and or bully the shit be, out of like, you. I, I I think that every single group of humans possible has something that's funny, and I'll, I I think you've seen. I will make fun of literally anything and everybody, and yeah. it's. Like that group of people are so afraid to be made fun of while doing and saying things that they know are inherently ridiculous and they can't just own it. Yeah. No, you know, and then they get defensive and they make you out to be the asshole who for like thinking that it's funny what they're doing. Well, I mean, people, I, listen, I think I think people should definitely have like their communities, and I think that like if if people can have like they found their like space um, where they they feel safe and they feel like accepted and um, they're with people that you know I think that's really good. What what's what's not good is sharing it with the world to see, um, because uh, you will be ridiculed by everybody. <laughs> And, um, yeah, no one's, no one's going to like that, man. Um, and honestly, like you should just, I mean, when, when I, when I hear about like, you know, oh, I, you know, there's a community, a meeting of furries or whatever, or, or whatever, or fucking, uh, the doctor who fans just, yeah, just keep that to yourself. Like don't, and don't let people like me into your inner circle. Uh, not that I'm like particularly vindictive anymore, <laughs> but like, no, just keep me out of it, man. Keep the world, keep, keep people like you and me out of it. So you don't, you don't have to feel like, you know, you're being uh, viewed or, or judged in any way. You know, I think it's incredibly important to, to have like communities that are, that, that are supportive to you and your interests, but um, just, just don't. Don't share it. And if you do, if you do, just hope to God that it stays hidden and I don't put it on this show for people to laugh at. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm trying to find this clip. There's this girl, total Tumblr girl, dressed up as the TARDIS from Doctor Who, and she's like, normal is just a setting on a washing machine. And um, that would really tie this in. <laughs> I know what you're talking. Yeah, about. I can't. I can't find the clip because. Uh, well, this looks great. Oh, let's see what this dumb woman has to say. Ah, uh, 2010s Tumblr. There's nothing quite as nostalgic or weirdly horrific than Tumblr in the 2010s. From phrases like. Sm I'm gonna be sick. I Queen can't watch teens, it. The teens. I can't watch a single more Kiwi. second of that. <laughs> um. Oh God. Yeah, I don't know. That's the thing too. It's just like, cause like I've 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 definitely stepped off the ledge with like uh or step back from the ledge. Excuse me. Maybe I have stepped off the ledge, and maybe that's why I'm here. But um, I've I've definitely one way got... or the other, you got away from the edge. Well, I got away from irony poisoning, and um, you know that is that is a thing. Like if you if you're a fucking if you're a human being and you can't have like any genuine experiences in your life like everything is fucking lame and everything's a goddamn joke like that's that's bad and people are probably like don't like you your friends are probably annoyed with you like the people who are supposed to like you are like ah, that's 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 terry that's random terry that's terry who says things like phantom tax and skibbity toilet in which i don't even know what those words mean i just hear them but you know, those are the, you, they use those in day to day conversation. That's Terry. He's 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 chronically online. Um, but yeah. Like, so I'm just gonna just just to because if you don't know what they mean, then it, I think it's even funnier. <laughs> 
to tell you what they mean because okay. the skibbity toilet one man that really came out of nowhere that's for me. like some weird video it's a video Gary's mod it's a video, video of, of g-man sticking his head out of a toilet in gmod dude that's so fun so that's why i'm so weird like how did zoomers not even it's gen alpha how did that happen they never played gmod well they don't even know they don't what even it know is, who g-man sure. is do they because that's the thing do they know like what it's from or they're just like funny video I have I have no clue. I just know what it is because I saw it and I was like, okay, what the fuck is this? And it's G Man. And I was like, wait a minute, is this some like fifteen year old YouTube poop that like became a thing? No, it's it. I it doesn't make sense to me. But yeah, I, well, that's the thing is where I because I kind of knew like I kind and of I've seen tax. the imagery. Yeah, Phantom Tax is there's a Twitch streamer whose name is Phantom, and I guess he has like guest on while he streams and shit and he'll always like take a piece of their food and call it the phantom tax and so it started out as a thing that his just twitch chat would say oh so it had now beginnings and now it's been blown out of proportion just like everything else in meme culture or whatever yeah so both of those things and like where they originated were probably actually funny and then now it's like Everybody sure. says it and doesn't know what it means. Yeah, well, I mean, that makes me think of like, was it back in 2017? Uh, 17 with the there was that VR chat video with like fucking Knuckles the Echidna, and it was like, um, do you know uh, the way? Yeah, and that remember how that was funny for five fucking minutes? That was yes. like the first instance in which I had su- seen something just completely blow itself the fuck out in like less than a day, less than a solar cycle. It was like, fuck you, stop posting it, it's not funny, you're a faggot, you're an idiot, you know what I mean? It's like, Jesus Christ. And I think that was kind of like the moment in which I realized, it's like, oh, I don't, I don't like any of this. I don't like, I, I have no interest in fucking memes or in-jokes or any of this shit outside of like my friends. Because it's just like, this is, because that's, that's a th- I think Nick Mullen once famously said, um, thing about Western culture is that, um, you got to be cool and everything that was, you got to consider everything that was cool five minutes ago to be incredibly gay. And like, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of like, that's, I, yeah, I just, I can't do it anymore. I, 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 I've become the old man that's, that doesn't understand what children are saying. And honestly, it's fine. You know, I'm, tr- I'm, I'm almost, I'm approaching my thirties and it's, that's probably how that should be. Um, I don't, I don't think I, I caught myself saying, um, dead ass or something like that the other day like kind of as a joke and i was like kind of sickened with myself uh because i'm like i realized like i'm too old to be saying this <laughs> like oh, gen- genuinely the too first old. time i know that i know the first time it ever happened to me i was 25 mm-hmm. and i was recently single and i decided okay fuck it like i'm back in an area that i'd never been like i would come back home from california I'm single and I never done Tinder before. Mm-hmm. So I went on Tinder and met up with a girl who was, so I'm 25 and she was 21. So not that much younger than me, but it was young enough to where she had like, she had terminology that I had never heard. Yeah. And she started, she would like, I need, instead of saying like, okay, she would say bet. Oh yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's the first time that that ever happened to me where I was like, what the fuck is this? And now it's in my, ter- it's in my lexicon and of I can't course. get it out. Well, that's how language works, but it's just like, yeah. But like, yeah, that's the first time it ever happened to me where I was like, I'm 25 and I feel old. Like, I don't know. I did. I, I was like, bet like, what are we betting on? What? It's happening. It's happening. Yeah. Right. That's what I thought the first time I heard that too. It was like, well, and that, and that's going, it just keeps happening faster and faster because like there are no real, like, generational gaps anymore outside of like fucking how much how much technology were you exposed to at age two like that's the only like defining characteristic of like a cohort anymore because like there is no older brother coming back from college to show you the new fucking like modest mouse album he got while he was away because you can ex- you can if access anything, all this the shit it, it, if anything it's it's you're coming back from you know, I, I was at work for the last like three months or whatever, and now it's Christmas and I'm coming home to to visit the family and the younger brother who's on his iPad all the time is showing you shit. Oh, yeah. 
you yeah. know, it's like almost right. Oh, totally. Well, and that's the thing is just you can't. And then you hit a point in your life where you're like, okay, I don't care about culture anymore. Like, I, I'm not interested in like keeping up with trends, like or anything. Not that I ever really was, you know, um, necessarily. I was always kind of doing my own thing. But like, yeah, you you hit a point where you're just like, I don't know what any of this is. And like, but I'm just saying is like that happens faster and faster. Like, I'm sure like 18 year olds now are like, I feel so old. <laughs> you know, I don't know what fucking, I don't know what the staring at the fucking sun challenge is. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what, what's uh, pointing a laser pointer in my eye for TikTok challenge is like, or whatever. I'm already aging myself already with, with these comments, but yeah, it's weird. All I know is that, um, everything is incredibly gay and stupid and I have the right idea and I'm right and you're wrong. And uh, everyone should listen to me, right? Well, I'm, I'm just going to go full um, boomer with as, it. As white American men creating a podcast, everybody should listen to our opinion because it is ontologically correct. Yeah, see, you got it. <laughs> well, yeah, anyway, that it. is all the time we have today for Happy Good Fortune. Um, <laughs> thank you all for listening. Um, I'm going to do some shit on social media to get um, some questions for next episode that we can answer. Uh, if you like this, uh, please uh, fucking like and subscribe and all that bullshit. And uh, comment on this video some questions for us to answer next time. And or, uh, I don't know, go to fucking, go to my website, go to find my email. You'll, you'll see it. Look at the description. If there's anything there, it'll be there. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. And until next time, uh, Jonathan, do you have anything? It was fun talking to you, and uh, I hope to do it again soon. Bye, everybody. Um, all right, I'm gayer than all of you. <laughs>